Hello and welcome to Mediumship Matters with me, Hannah McIntyre. How are you doing? Just a quick reminder before we get down to it today that my live course, Me, Myself and Spirit, starts very soon in September. September. It's a phenomenal course that is a one-off. It's not going to be repeated, so this is your only chance. We are looking to work with people who aren't absolute beginners, so you have some idea of how your mediumship works. You will have done at least one spirit link, but you are looking to improve. We're looking at both aspects of mediumship development, so not just the mediumship, but also the things that you can do as a medium to improve that and improve your delivery. I've got phenomenal guest teachers joining us, so do pop over to mediumshipmatters.co.uk for all the details. Would love to have you there. Next up, I have a question from Jodie. Now, I'm aware that there are some earlier questions for the podcast that people have sent in. A shout out to Martin, who's been waiting since April, but I just wanted to stick to this theme of mediumship itself for uh, for now, and then we will move on as soon as possible. So Jodie says, Hi Hannah, I just want to first say thank you for your insights on mediumship. It has helped me as a practicing medium a great deal. I also loved your book and so much resonated with me. I have a question and would value your opinion, please. My purpose for readings are to connect to past loved ones to let people know they never leave us, that there is an afterlife as well as healing current and past issues. I've seen spirit bring through incredible healings during sessions. I've even had skeptics turn to believing. Even though I'm not here to convince anyone of anything, just to share messages from the spirit world. Although my readings have brought through many validations and my clients seem genuinely happy, why is it I feel I haven't given enough sometimes? I mean, even though there are numerous validations, I feel if I don't get that eureka moment, it's not enough. Is it my own lack of self-worth? Do I just know if more was meant, more would be? Any advice would be greatly appreciated. Warm regards, Jodie. What I first of all want to say to you, Jodie, is welcome to mediumship. And I'm not being snarky by that. I mean in a kind of there, there, arm around you, gathering you up in the plethora of mediums that feel exactly, exactly like you do. So I'm really, really grateful that you sent in this message because I think it's a great topic to talk about. Now, I think not enoughness can bear its ugly head in our mediumship way more often than it should. But I also think it's really important and it serves a great purpose. So it's easy, I think, to disregard how many validations you are getting in a reading. I remember once with some of my students on the Elevate course, asking them to actually write down and count how many bits of evidence they actually gave. And it it's amazing. It does feel like it's not enough. And then you look back and you think, bloody hell, that was 20 bits of specific evidence I gave that sitter. So I think we all go through that. But I think it's good that we do. Because a lot of the mediums that I have met who don't have that are not very good and I wish I could phrase that in a slightly more love and light way but I've just got to say it the way I've got to say it there's uh yeah the mediums I have met that um think they are good enough quite often have given me really rubbish readings I'd like to be fluffier than that but it's true now I know of course there are exceptions to every rule so don't all start emailing me I'm not saying that every medium that feels like they're good enough is a bad medium but I'm just saying as a general rule I think this desire for not 
for, for was it good enough, can I do more, is actually what keeps you on the leading edge with your mediumship. Because I think as soon as you think, yeah, that's good enough, I've done well, don't you just take your foot off the gas a bit? And isn't the best stuff really in the striving for it, in the pushing through your boundaries and really reaching for that specific mind-blowing bit of evidence? I think it is. So it's a dual purpose thing. It will be the thief of your joy because you will look at every reading, every reading you ever do and think that wasn't good enough. Could I have done better? But it's also the thing that will make you push through, that will make you work harder, that will make you not settle. I had a really interesting chat with some of my students the other day because we were doing a runes workshop as part of the gateway. And as I was going around the breakout rooms and listening to them, as always with all my teaching, I was channeling spirit simultaneously. So my teaching is partly me and partly spirit always. And they got me to write down this list of questions that they wanted me to ask my students. And some of the questions were things like, were you specific enough? Were you getting feedback from the sitters? Were you getting yeses? And um, we had a bit of a conversation about how specific you can be with an oracle, and I maintained more specific than perhaps people thought. But there's something really important about the energy of a yes that I also want to ask if you're utilising, Jodie. Because when people sit in front of a medium, whether it is in a platform audience demonstration or whether it's one on one, people have a tendency to not reply. They can nod, they can smile. You might um, know that it's a yes from their body language, but that is not the same as them saying yes. And I think there is a process that happens for sitters when they go yes, yes. Yes, it does something to them. They start really recognising the value of the evidence that you're giving. So I would ask you this, Jodie, is it sometimes not you that's dissatisfied, but actually you wanting your sitter to be more in that energy of, oh my goodness, I can't believe this. This is another yes. Yes, that makes sense. Because that's really the space that your sitter needs to bring to create magic. Now, you mentioned in your email Eureka moments, and I get you, girly. There is nothing more gratifying than giving somebody a piece of evidence that is so mind-blowing, so right, so specific, that it's like they've been struck by lightning. And what I think that does for you as a medium is gives you a big hit of energy because it is like a lightning bolt. They feel it and you can't help but feel the electricity that that has created. And that is a wonderful thing. But the problem with Eureka moments and lightning bolts is they don't happen every time. In fact, they happen less than a normal reading where someone says thank you very much and leaves. And it's a bit like, I'm trying to think, once you've had the taste of it, you can't, you, you hanker for it. It's like me with chocolate. <laughs> I've always loved chocolate. I probably should never have had that first taste because ever since then it's never been enough. Once when I was a kid, a little aside, a friend of mine at um, school gave me an Easter egg unexpectedly at school. And being a bit naughty, I didn't tell my mum or dad and I hid it in my school bag. And when I got home from school, I don't know why, it's such a strong memory for me, but I didn't just eat it in my bedroom. I got under my dressing table and curled up in the bit where the stool went and I devoured that Easter egg in seconds. And no chocolate has ever tasted as good since as that chocolate in that moment. That's an aside. Um, so 
this is the problem because once you know that you're capable of a eureka you want a eureka for every reading because you've done it once and you didn't doubt when the client that had the eureka moment left because you felt it in you how good that mediumship was you had that gratification that massive tick you knew you'd done an effing phenomenal job but it doesn't mean that the jobs you have done for other people have been less phenomenal. And I think it's partly down to your sitter's personality as well. I've had people who have been so sort of casual in the, in the sitter place of, yeah, yeah, that makes sense, yeah. It doesn't sound like you're giving them anything mind-blowing. It just sounds like you're reeling off a shopping list. Did you get eggs? Yeah. Bacon? Yeah. Sunflower oil? Yeah. And although they're yeses, they still don't have that energy, that, that certain something, that thunderbolt in them. And so when they leave, you do think, wow, I didn't really seem to blow their mind. And yet they are the ones that email you afterwards and tell you that they changed, that their lives were changed, that you transformed them, that that was beyond their wildest expectations. And so this is the problem. It's all a big mix of everything you said in your email. It is partly you. And this is the problem of being a medium is that we do want validation from our sitters. We do want to know that it was good enough. You do want to feel that crackly electric energy. But some people, when they get close to that crackly electric energy, they don't emit it. They absorb it and sit quietly with it. And sometimes, because mediumship is an experiment, because it is never constant, because you don't know how it's going to be from one day to the next, sometimes it is actually impossible for you, for whatever reason, whether it's your energy, whether it's the energy the sitter brings, whether it's a um, how well you blend with that particular personality of a spirit in the spirit world, sometimes you just have to accept it's never, it's not going to be a cooking on gas. And this is the really hard thing. There have been people that I have done 10 out of 10 readings for. And there have been people that I've done 5 out of 10 readings for. And I can't honestly tell you what the difference is, why the magic was there for the 10 out of 10, and why it just didn't feel like it was on the 5 out of 10. There are people who walk around who think I'm a phenomenal medium, and there are people who walk around who think I'm distinctly average, and that's fair. And this is the hard thing. I don't know. I don't know what the secret sauce is that makes it work the way that we wish it would every time. It's the same as I've mentioned with audiences. Sometimes an audience comes in and you go, this is going to be a phenomenal night and you start working and it is as flat as a bloody pancake. And sometimes you get an audience come in and you go, oh, this one's going to be tough. I can just feel it. And it's phenomenal. And they go on this journey with you and you can't bloody believe how lucky you are to be working. And that is mediumship. That's how it is. I think after a while, and when I say a while, um, I said to somebody the other day, I've been working with Spirit for 10 years. And then she said, oh, I'm a bit longer than you. I'm 2009. And I went, oh, no, well, I was 2010. And then I looked and realised <laughs> it's a bit longer than 10 years. Oh, my God, where's the time going? But recently. And by recently, I mean in the last year. In the last year, I have started to recognise that I am a good medium. And that doesn't mean that it's always phenomenal. It doesn't mean that I don't get five out of ten links. It's just that I know that I'm capable of ten out of ten links if it's that alignment of time, space, spirit, sitter, me. But I don't, it doesn't hold me back anymore. 
But that, if I'm honest, Jodie, is also why I prefer demonstrating to one-on-one -on -one readings. Because when you're demonstrating, if you have a slightly challenging sitter or an energy that just isn't working, I'm not saying that you wouldn't do a good job, but you don't have to sit in that energy for 45 minutes. You can do it and it's done and you move on. Whereas when you're doing a one-on-one -on -one reading for somebody, there's nothing worse than glancing at the clock when you feel like you're 20 minutes into a half an hour and realizing it's been six minutes. And that's not the sitter's fault, but it's not my fault either. That's just the way that it works sometimes. You know, like, there are people out there that everybody thinks is amazing and you just don't gel with. And I know we always talk about the time they're proven to be the bad guy and our instincts were right. But what about the times when they were just perfectly nice, they just weren't your cup of tea, they weren't your kind of person? Well, I think that happens with spirits in the spirit world too. There are some people you vibe with and some people you can have a conversation, but it's it's not got an ease to it. And therefore, there's a limit to what you can achieve as a medium. If you can't rapport with the spirit for whatever reason, then you can't rapport with the spirit. And that is the job. Does that make sense? I hope so. So really, Jodie, what I'm saying is honour yourself for how well you're doing, for the fact that this job is a permanently difficult job. And that's part of the reason that it's permanently difficult. Because even though people think psychics predict the future, there is no predictive nature to all of these unknowns. I am going into venues to demonstrate and I have no idea how the night's going to go. You're sitting down with sitters and you have no idea how that reading's going to go. There is zero comfort in mediumship. But you can just and only do the best that you can do. And forgive yourself being imperfect. I hope that makes sense. I hope that that resonates with you. If you've got any more questions, please do drop me an email and thank you so much for messaging. I just really love your questions, all of your questions, so much so that I just hit the microphone. Um, they really do, they're everything because together we get that collaborative energy and the answers out there. So I hope this helps and have a fan-bloody-tastic day.